This is absolutely, completely ridiculous. And the worst part is that we don't even have to ask ourselves where these images are from. We can instantly recognize that this is what voting looks like in the United States. And on the surface, it's easy to make a quick assumption. There's a lot of people in the US. We all get to vote. And so it's probably going to take all day. But if you're like us, you're pretty suspicious of face value. We know that voting in the United States is not an inalienable right. It's been fought for for generations. How we vote was designed to accommodate the few. But what we really need to be asking ourselves is, how do we change the system so that it accommodates all of us? In June, I didn't get to vote in the New York primary. My absentee ballot just didn't arrive. And so after a moment of despair, I decided to quickly look up what was the latest successful lawsuit against the Board of Elections in New York. And I thought, all right, this is it. This is the moment. We're going to sue the Board of Elections. <laughs> But after talking to a few lawyers and to friends, it quickly became clear that like, maybe that wasn't the best way to move forward. But what was crystal clear is that there's no recourse for voters. A voter almost never gets to give it another go. Every election is one shot at getting it right. At this point, we heard reports of almost 30,000 New Yorkers not receiving their absentee ballot and not getting to vote. And this was devastating. And I was like, if this is happening in New York, what's happening in other parts of the country? So my next move was I decided to testify in front of the New York Campaign Finance Board. And during the testimony, some of the most compelling stories were coming from poll workers. They told stories about staff shortages, around confusing rule changes on absentee ballots and early voting. But one thing was incredibly clear. The general election will not run smoothly unless we have fully staffed polling sites. So that week, I started Work the Polls. And Work the Polls is a grassroots initiative to enact what I heard we needed for the general election. Our mission is to have a clear path for as many young people as possible to apply to be poll workers in their communities. We're focused on recruitment, training, and reforming the poll worker experience across the country. But I knew there was no chance I could do this alone. And so when Laura called, I immediately wanted to help. Around the same time, Laura and I had recently reconnected, and we wished that we could grab a coffee like we used to, but we live in different parts of the country, and that was just not in the cards during the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. So instead, we called each other every Friday morning for some brainstorming, or some would probably call it venting, but we would talk about politics, economics, democracy. And at some point, we looked at each other and asked, are we stuck or can we do something? I mean, we've both worked in some pretty big industries that are inextricably connected to the public sector. I've been working in real estate. And I was in tech for a long time. And both of these industries are low-key pretty connected to voting. Ultimately, we vote in a physical location, and we rely on technology to count the vote. And so when Laura started describing the data to me, I was pretty floored. So here's how it breaks down. We face a shortage of 250,000 poll workers. That means that two thirds of jurisdictions across the United States are gonna be understaffed this election. And honestly, it's probably safe to say we've never had a fully staffed election in the United States. This massive shortage is in part due to the fact that 60% of poll workers are over the age of 60. And in a pandemic, these people have every right to stay home. But the consequence of not having enough poll workers is really simple. Polling sites close. In Milwaukee, for example, there are usually 180 polling sites across the city. But in April, there were only five. Between a pandemic forcing so many poll workers to have to stay home, resulting in this shortage of 250,000 staffers, this election is at risk of not being free or fair. So with Work the Polls, we set out on a mission to recruit the largest, most diverse core of poll workers ever. But I quickly realized that's easier said than done. Studies show that from application to training, 70% of people drop out. And then from training to actually showing up to work that day, it's another 15% that drop out. And this isn't because young people are lazy or hate paperwork and therefore can't navigate bureaucracy. 
From Queens County, New York to Fairbanks, Alaska, the process is honestly just difficult. There are no comprehensive federal election standards. That means in order to apply, sometimes you have to call, you have to mail in a form that was like a static PDF form, you have to call to get status updates about your application, and you might even have to proactively seek out your training. And this isn't just hypothetical. When I was applying to be a poll worker in San Francisco, the process was a bit weird. At the end of the application, there were two questions. The first question included a spelling mistake, and the second question was phrased like an SAT trick question. In theory, neither of them were difficult to answer, but they were both so poorly written. And you wouldn't know that if you got either one of them wrong, you would be immediately disqualified from being a poll worker in the city. At the same time that San Francisco was desperately trying to recruit this large core of poll workers, they were also eliminating them with some poorly written filters. So I drafted an email to the San Francisco Board of Elections, and honestly, I thought it was gonna get buried in some bureaucratic black hole. But to my surprise, that didn't happen. The next morning, I was on the phone with a real person who listened to me, explained the historical precedent, and even thanked me for being involved. Not only that, but 24 hours after I sent that initial email, the city changed their application. They removed those filters and made it more accessible to every applicant. So we aren't just gonna change the number of poll workers participating in this election. We're gonna change the system just like Clevis did in San Francisco. We're gonna chip away at what it takes to become a poll worker, county by county, whatever it takes, to make sure that every single person that's ready to be on the front lines of this democracy as a poll worker this November, and every election moving forward can actually do so. Because poll workers are mission critical on election day. They're the ones that actually administer democracy. They help us all navigate the system, and they're the ones that are there answering the tough questions. Like, hey, I applied for an absentee ballot, but it didn't arrive. Can I still vote here? Or, hey, I just moved to this city. Is this my voting location? So my dad's in quarantine. Is there any chance I can bring him a ballot? I received my absentee ballot, but I didn't really have time to put it in the mail. Can I drop it off with you? And this affidavit ballot, is this even legit? And if I put my ballot in this machine, is it actually gonna get counted? And you and I both know that technology will be part of the system that builds trust in our elections. But today, those elections are fueled by people. We still rely on one another. And that reliance is built by having a friend or a neighbor at the polling site. And to be that friend or neighbor, to be that poll worker there ready and willing to help, we acknowledge that it's not easy. That process is not easy. We see you out here trying to be poll workers. We see your applications. We know that your board of elections aren't getting back to you right away and that the next step might really just not be clear. And so at Work the Polls, we don't glaze over this reality. We confront it head on. There are 3,243 counties across America. And each one is responsible for creating their own poll worker registration process. In Mendocino County, California, this is what the application looks like. In Mecklenburg County, South Carolina, you have to call to get this. In Fairbanks County, Alaska, this is what we're working with. But not all hope is lost. There is some really good precedent out there. In Boston, for example, the application looks like this. So yeah, this is really exciting. But just so that we drive our point home, in Essex County, which is where I'm from, the application looks like this. There is actually no way to complete the process online. But the solutions are at our fingertips. They already exist. There are no cost, easy to implement online tools that make all the difference. In the future, we want to see digital accessible poll worker applications in every county, and we want every county to use an online portal to schedule your workday and your training session. We want training sessions to happen in person and online so that they can be in every language. And we want poll workers to be trained on new age voting systems. We want data and computer scientists in demand at 
every board of elections in every county. We want the system to be redesigned for all. Really, we want democracy to be democratic. When they say democracy is not a spectator sport, it's not just about voting. If every member of our community is to have rightful access to their vote, our democratic process requires our collective participation. I don't know about you, but we, we definitely refuse to accept the idea that today's status quo is how elections are supposed to look forever. We've laid out some ideas about how to change the poll worker application process, but we're gonna need to keep evolving the whole system. And in order to push the system into the future, we have to let them know we wanna vote. And how do we let them know? We vote. That's how we demand democracy for all. And so if we're gonna make sure that we can all vote in every state, in every county, sign up to be a poll worker. We're gonna need poll workers in every election, no matter what. Election day is a long day, but it's so worth it, especially when we're in it together.